move to the I for a standard I S thirty seven provisions. The corresponding accounting standard under Indian accounting standard is A S twenty nine provisions. So we have brief idea or brief understanding about the standard under Indian accounting standards A S twenty nine, and the most important is the definition of provision. When we refer to the definition of provisions, provision is liability of uncertain timing or amount. Now, first is what is liability, and for liability we have to go to the IFRS framework. Well, IFRS framework defines what is liability, what is asset, what is income. What is expenses? And when we refer to all the standard under IFRS, the IFRS framework is the base of all the standards. I will definitely recommend each and every webcast users please go through the IFRS framework first, and then only proceed for learning of various other standards. So IFRS framework defines liability. So provision is liability of uncertain timing or amount. And liability is what? Liability is a present obligation as a result of past events, the settlement of which will result into outflow of economic resources emanating from the entity. So, liability has the most important characteristics as a present obligation, and it should arise from past events. And when we refer to the provision. Provision says the liability of uncertain timing or amount is provision. Hence, the most important critical is that first we have to be clear about the components or characteristics of liability, and then whether estimation is involved, whether uncertainty is involved with respect to timing or amount, then we have to come to provision. Now the most important thing is that uncertain about timing or amount. So please be please be sure that when we talk about the provision definitions, we are talking about liability of uncertain timing or amount. Now before going to the standard, see what I will do. We will refer the slides on the later on part. First, let us understand the concept. Let us uh, let us take the example that I have gone into market one of the uh, stores, electronic stores, to buy a laptop. Or If we have purchased a TV or a refrigerator from a particular company, so the first thing is that we always consider if it is a branded goods, then generally they provide a warranty. If it is a Sony laptop or another Apple laptop, we always see that is it a one year warranty or six months warranty. Now let us think accounting from perspective of company. Company has sold a laptop to you. so and the laptop is having a warranty of 1 year now in that case for example if the as per terms and condition of warranty there is some damage or something happens which is covered under the warranty terms and condition then the company is required to reimburse or replace as per the warranty conditions given now in that case what will happen that company may be required to incur extra or additional cost for the sale which is incurred by the company in the previous period so provision is what is a liability of uncertain timing or amount liability is what is a present obligation so when the company has made a sale of laptop to you at that time a present obligation has come into picture because in future if something happens and the consumer or customer comes back for replacement company is bound by the contract to make a good the damage is caused to particular uh, goods or laptop so there is a present obligation for company when at the time of sale is done yes second is that is it uncertain whether timing or amount is uncertain yes it is uncertain because i am not sure that how many customers will encounter this kind of problems and 
for how how much cost i am going to incur where uh, the custom comes back and then i need to replace or i need to make the good so there's a need to have create a provision for a company it's called warranty provision now the same example will happen to various cases across the industry when you talk about a pharmaceutical company litigation is one of the very important and very prevalent area for pharma companies patent infringement or we'll have various examples where pharma companies are facing a huge litigations for patent infringement and other kind of things now in that case again if any claimant has lodged a suit against a company then whether the company is required to make provision or not that is the determination point for each and every company management and the auditor now then comes our role as a management or auditor just to ensure that the my financials are true and fair and in all respects if there is a need to create a provision we need to create a provision so when we refer to the standard is 37 or is 29 in indian gap the board standard will have great onus on the management and the auditors just to ensure because that two things i know one is about uncertainty of timing or amount and two whether you do create a provision or you do disclose as criminal liability or not to be disclosed so when you refer to the standard it says provisions contingent liabilities and contingent assets and there is a thin line between provisions and contingent liability so judgment is involved and with judgment there has to be accumulation and evidences which, which suggests that there is a need of provision or there is no need of provision but it is a contingent liability to be disclosed or it is not a contingent liability so the role of management and order is very important now let's move forward to the second example let's uh, we all are aware about the recent case of vodafone there was a tax dispute for vodafone and uh, supreme court has uh, given uh, direction and judgment that retrospective amendment will not be done okay i just uh, repeat because vodafone case was there and supreme court has given a case in favor of vodafone but ultimately the finance minister has in the budget introduced a provision for retrospective application now these are the few very critical and very important uh, case laws and important uh, cases which happen which will really be very difficult for a uh, management to make a uh, provision or contingent liability so when we refer to the vodafone annual report we find that they have made a detailed disclosure of all the chain of event which happened and then why they feel that there is no need to be provisions so that disclosure is also one of the very important thing under is 37 now let's move to the slides the first standard is is 37 provisions contingent liability and contingent assets scope applicability <clears throat> now as we all are aware that each and every standard of ifrs is in the structured manner it will have first objective second scope third definition or important terms then comes recognition principles measurement principles and then disclosures scope is the entry point for applicability of any standard i always say that the one of the most important thing for anyone to apply the standard is please understand and ensure that whether the standard is applicable to you or not <coughs> once the standard is applicable to you then it is very easy you need to just go through standard and apply the provisions but is the particular standard is applicable in this transaction or not for that we need to go through the scope applicability it says it is applied to all provisions contingent liability and contingent assets but it does not apply so normally when you look at a scope generally it excludes wherever there is a specific provisions available that specific provision or specific standards are excluded from the general standards so it excludes from the scope any provisions with respect to is 11 is 12 
IS-17 and it does not apply to executory contracts. <coughs> now the question is what is executory contracts? Executory contracts is a contract where neither party has performed anything in the contract or both the parties has performed to the equal level. So both parties are on either on the equal level or none of the party has performed any contract or any obligation under the contract. So exit contracts are out of the, the standards I studies and provisions. Then onerous contract. So when we refer to the previous style, slide, you must have seen that it is it does not apply to exit contracts but other than owner's contract. Now, what is owner's contract? Owner's contract is a contract whereby the unavoidable cost of meeting the contract exceeds the expected benefit from, of the, from the contract. So, wherever there is some situation that you already entered into one contract and you need to abide by the contract, but the benefit which is going to be flowing from the contract is lesser than the cost or obligation of meeting the particular contract then it is called owner's contract so owner's contract is included in the IS 37 applicability so we covered the contracts can be executive contracts it can be owner's contract executive contracts are excluded owner's contracts are covered the examples of owner's contract is basically where there is example I given is a franchising agreement where the company is entered into a terms of franchise agreement for years but the entity need to make a provision because entity is committed to pay a lump sum amount to the franchiser and it is a non cancelable franchise agreement for a period of two more years so when you, when you just go through the example say based on the market survey and a cost benefit study the entity decided to stop marketing the local brand and enter into a new agreement to market an international brand so the company is entered into franchise agreement now franchise agreement says that for example four years this agreement is there so at least for four years i need to make payment of franchise after two years i as a management take a decision that let's go and do some other areas and don't mark into this particular area where we are entered into franchise agreement. So in that case, what will happen that my obligation under contract is fixed by your terms of contract and if there is a clause, exit clause available and if the exit clause provides that I need to make a lump sum amount of XYZ to terminate the contract so I have two options either I pay exit clause lump sum amount as a termination payment or I continue so whichever is lower obviously I will go for the lower cost so that is called owner's contract because there is no benefit which is flowing from the continuation of contract but which need to be entered which need to be continued or uh, exited because of the there is no benefit available from the contract So, uh, what is provision? What is liability? We have already discussed. Provision is a liability of uncertain timing or amount. Liability is a present obligation of an entity arising from past events, the settlement of which is expected to result in an outflow of resources and body equaling benefits. Now, if you want to recognize a provision, then there, there are three conditions to be fulfilled. As I discussed with you in the earlier, the first there is objective definition, second is about the scope, and third is about the recognition conditions. If you want to recognize provision, there are three conditions need to be fulfilled. One, present obligation arising from past event. Two, probable that that outflow of resources onboarding economic benefit would be required to settle the obligation and third a reliable estimate can be made of the amount of the obligation 
now when all these three conditions are fulfilled then the provision need to be recognized now next slide is about a present obligation can be either legal or constructive now here there comes a difference with indian gap when we refer to the indian gap the indian gap indian gap does not basically talk about constructive obligation in spirit so when we refer to a in indian gap as29 and when we compare this as29 with i37 i37 also recognizes in the standard constructive obligation so the obligation can be either legal or constructive now the question is very important that what is constructive obligation now if the entity has through the past trend of practices or custom has created a valid expectation in the minds of the other party and has made it clear that the company is going to perform the obligations now it is called establish pattern of past practices and thereby created valid expectations then it is also covered as a part of present obligation so the first thing is a second thing is that what is provable because when we refer to the definitions here it says that just look at the b b says that it is a provable that an outflow of resources embodying economic benefits would be required to settle the obligation the word which is used is provable the probable is what probable is defined as a more likely than not so uh, this is established pattern of past practices that by creative expectations legal contractual legislation or operation of law next slide what is condition liability condition liability is defined as a possible obligation that arises from past events and whose existence will be confirmed only by occurrence or non occurrence of one or more uncertain future events not wholly within the control of the entity so there are two things one thing is that it is a possible obligation that arises from past event right and whose existence will be confirmed only by occurrence or non occurrence of one or more uncertain events so when we refer to the definition of condition liability there are two main aspect which one need to consider one is that possible obligation and second thing is that present obligations present obligation is not recognized because outflow is not probable or the amount cannot be reliably measured now let us refer to the slide so here the slide says condition liability there are two options one is possible obligation second is present obligation present obligation is a condition liability if the outflow is not probable or the amount cannot be reliably measurable now let's go through our earlier definition of liability here when we look at the provisions it says that there are three conditions to be fulfilled one present obligations to probable that outflow will be required and three is reliable estimate so b and c are also one of the very important parts for recognition of provisions so when we refer to the provisions recognition in books of account there are three conditions to be fulfilled one present obligations to outflow probable and three reliable estimate can be made but when we refer to the condition liability two or three if not there then it is a condition liability not a provision i hope it's clear right so the provision all these three conditions are required to be fulfilled but for condition liabilities you need to fulfill one and two or one and three so one is that present obligation now let's go back to again condition liability so present obligations if it is present obligations either of these conditions is missing or it is a possible obligation so it is possible obligations that arise from past events and whose existence will be confirmed only by occurrence or non occurrence now if it is a condition liability you have to disclose if it is not remote 
I think this particular uh, next slide will make it uh, very easy because what I have done is that the whole uh, possible obligation, present obligation, and the definition of contingent liability is will summarize in this chart. So it says that if the possible obligations occurrence or non occurrence depends upon the future events which are not wholly within the control of the entity or with the present obligations then either the outflow is not probable or the amount cannot be measurable reliably so estimation cannot be done reliably so this is what conjugal liability now whenever we face a question in our practical life shall i need to make provision or conjugal liability we need to go through with these conditions when you feel that is a present obligations but either of these condition is not fulfilled it is conjugal liability or it is possible obligations it is out of the requirement of recognition from books of accounts now coming to contingent assets contingent assets are possible assets that arise from a past event and whose existence is confirmed only by occurrence or non occurrence of one or more uncertain future events not wholly within the control of the entity now let's compare the definition of contingent asset with the contingent liability when we refer to the definition of contingent liability we talk about two things one is a possible obligation and second thing is about a present obligation now when we refer to the definition of contingent assets we are also referring to the possible asset so when it is a possible asset it is contingent assets contingent asset in the normal case need not be disclosed but in a specific case where it is probable then it is to be disclosed which again a distinction with this say that you are not able to reliable estimate then that means third condition is not fulfilled because if you have to create a provision third condition that is reliable measurement of the amount is also compulsory when you are not able to reliably estimate it is not provision and in that case it is to be disclosed as contingent liability uh next slide is on reimbursement now reimbursement is a uh, basically one kind of asset basically uh if you have a particular right to recover the loss which is being incurred by you then you can recover from third party so that means you can create a reimbursement asset so the standard says that reimbursement assets to be created only when it is virtually certain and the amount of reimbursement asset shall not exceed the related provision amount now next point is on what is restructuring restructuring is a program that is planned and controlled by the management and it materially changes either the scope of a business undertaken by an entity or the manner in which the business is conducted so that means the two things are required it is control and plan by management one and two it should materially change either the scope or the manner if these two conditions are fulfilled then it is called restructuring now restructuring can be a discontinued operations or it can be anything else but for if it is a discontinued operations then we have to go to ifrs 5 ifrs 5 is non current asset held for sale and discontinued operations so first if it is restricting provisions and then if it is qualified to be a discontinued operations we need to apply the provisions of ifrs 5 now restructuring provision constructive obligation when to provide it is to provide when first there is a detailed formal plan and second that has created a valid expectation in the mind of those affected that the entity will carry out restructuring by starting to implement the plan or announcing its main features to, to those affected by it so 
there are two things that are very important one thing is that there has to be a detailed formal plan the word which is used is a detailed formal plan and that detailed formal plan shall include a lot of things but it should at least include one the business or part of a business concern two principal location affected three location function and approximate number of employees will be compensated for terminating their services fourth expenditure that will be undertaken and five whether the plan will be implemented cost of restructuring it should include only the direct expenditure that arise from restructuring which are those that are both necessarily required by restructuring and it is not associated with the ongoing activities of the entity it does not include retraining or relocating continuing staff marketing or investment in new system or network because any cost or any expenditure which are not directly related to the restructuring but which happens or generate or expense of subsequent to the restructuring need to be ignored so let's take uh, a glance over this whole under i37 and then we move to ifrs2 first we discuss about provision for provision the three conditions are required one present obligations two probable out four and three is reliable estimate provision need to be recognized in the books of accounts provision is a liability of uncertain timing or amount then condition liability condition liability is defined as either a possible obligations or it is a present obligation but condition 2 or 3 are not fulfilled condition 2 is what outflow is not probable or condition 3 reliable measurement cannot be done condition liability is to be disclosed but not to be disclosed if it is a remote possibility of this particular obligation third condition asset condition asset is to be recognized only if it is virtually certain and disclose when it is probable and it is not to be disclose or to be recognize if it is not probable now here again is a difference with indian gap and indian gap condition asset not to be disclose but under i for i study seven says that you have to disclose condition asset if it is probable and what is probable which is more likely than not that is more than 50% chances 